So uh, the committee uh, was established by the decree of the government of the Republic of Tajikistan uh, dated on uh, December 24th, uh, 2K16. Uh, and the main goals of the committee include uh, resolving uh, the issues of the uh, private sector represent uh, private sector and uh, implementation of uh, trade WTO trade facilitation agreement. <coughs> Uh, so far, uh, the committee held uh, 10 meetings uh, and uh, the following uh, issues were, uh, were uh, revised, uh, including uh, the roadmap of the committee, uh, obligations under the categories A, B and C of the WTO trade facilitation agreement, uh, transit, tariff uh, and non-tariff measures, Tajikistan trade portal, uh, single window system, uh, border terminals issues, and etc. Okay, uh, now if you could uh, change the slide. Okay, uh, in order to uh, focus uh, the committee's attention on uh, more uh, specific uh, areas and resolve those issues, uh, it was decided to uh, <clears throat> to develop an action plan uh, which uh, contained uh, uh, for, for, two, for each year, uh, it contained uh, up to four uh, issues. And uh, in 2019, at the end of 2019, it was decided to develop an action plan, which included the following uh, issues uh, that were planned to be revised in 2K20. Uh, so, uh, First issue is single window. Uh, the other one is uh, implementation of items of the roadmap of uh, the committee, uh, simplification and uh, improvement of the Tajikistan trade portal uh, and uh, improvement of uh, border terminals of the Republic of Tajikistan. Uh, I should uh, note that the action plan was uh, developed uh, both uh, in uh, both uh, in cooperation with uh, both private and public sector. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, so as you know, a uh, single window system was launched uh, on the 1st of September 2K20, and now it's functioning. Uh, but before that, uh, by the request of the private sector representatives, uh, it was uh, dis decided to conduct a meeting. And uh, <clears throat> during th that meeting, uh, existing constraints were uh, revised uh, and more issues were also uh, introduced, uh, including uh, the user guideline of the single window system, uh, single window, uh, single application for certification. Uh, uh, also, it was uh, uh, revised. Uh, we also revised that uh, eleven bodies, uh, government bodies, were included in in, in the system, and also uh, amendments to the law on permit. Permit system was approved, uh, and by uh, so far, uh, more than uh, 2.5 2 uh, thousand uh, applications uh, were received by the single window center. Okay, next slide, please. All right, uh, so the next item of the action plan for 2020 uh, is uh, implementation of selected items of the committee's roadmap, uh, which is uh, still being uh, implemented, uh, but uh, it should be noted that one of them is already implemented, uh, which is a uh, regulation on authorized economic operators. Uh, this uh, reg uh, regulation introduces uh, more uh, preferences for uh, certain, uh, for the authorized economic operators, which are uh, uh, registered by the customs service uh, if they uh, comply with certain uh, certain uh, terms. Uh, okay, uh, the next one is uh, development of the strategy on E-Trade in, in the Republic of Tajikistan, which is still ongoing, but uh, a lot of uh, achievements were accomplished so far, uh, which includes uh, that the draft law on e-commerce was developed and now is being revised by the relevant ministers and agencies. 
Also, the concept of digital economy was uh, adopted by the relevant decree of the government of the Republic of Tajikistan. And uh, also in order to develop the strategy, more than 20 consultations with private and public sectors were conducted. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, the only item of the action plan, which is still not uh, a result, is uh, the border terminal study tour to Uzbekistan, which was postponed uh, due to pandemic COVID-19. Uh, it should also be noted that uh, all of the relevant documents, uh, candidates for the uh, trip, uh, for the study tour, uh, were uh, already developed and the concept note, program, surveys, and other relevant documents were developed, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19, it was postponed. Uh, but still, uh, it's planned to be conducted in the 2021. So the, uh, the goal of this uh, item of the action plan it was to decrease the price of the services provided in the terminals, and uh, am amend the active legislation on uh, border terminals. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, uh, Tajikistan Trade Portal, which was, uh, uh, <clears throat> which was introduced in 2K19, but uh, now we're talking in, oh, about 2K20. Uh, I'm gonna share with you some numbers, uh, which includes uh, 18,000 users in uh, 2K20, uh, which is also 68,000 views uh, in the, the 2K20, uh, and more than 350 users per week. Uh, and uh, also, Tajikistan Trade Portal uh, contains uh, a very uh, useful uh, option, which is the uh, suggestions and comments. Uh, so, and so far we have uh, received more than 30 queries uh, from uh, public and private sectors, which use the Tajikistan trade portal. And uh, based on those uh, queries, uh, it was decided to add a special section in the Tajikistan trade portal, which is uh, the list of the local uh, exporters and producers. And also, uh, we have the section uh, which includes the potential markets for the export of the Tajik products, uh, which is being regularly updated. Uh, and we have all also uh, integrated uh, three online instruments uh, from the <coughs> from the uh, different international organizations into the Tajikistan trade portal. Also, in order to uh, comply with the uh, certain uh, articles of the WTO TFA, uh, a transparency notification was uh, sent to the WTO Secretariat by the Permanent Technical Secretariat of the Committee. Next slide, please. So, uh, in order to uh, achieve the numbers that I have mentioned a few min moments ago, uh, we had uh, a <coughs> multiple uh, promote, promoting events on uh, introduction of Tajikistan trade portal. Uh, as you can see, uh, <clears throat> some of the events were face-to-face. Uh, -face, uh, so that was uh, before the pandemic, which includes uh, an event organized by the National Center for Support of Entrepreneurs for the private sector, uh, event organized for the members of the parliament of the Republic of Tajikistan, and the other one was organized by ITC and uh, multiple uh, online uh, webinars uh, uh, during which the Tajikistan trade portal was introduced. Uh, I, I would like to note that uh, in, uh, during those, uh, one of those uh, webinars uh, here is uh, noted as a UN CEPAC webinar on trade portal best practices. Uh, there were more than uh, representatives of more than 60 countries, and uh, they highly uh, ranked the uh, Tajikistan trade portal. Also, uh, in order to uh, <clears throat> uh, promote the Tajikistan trade portal, it was decided to uh, prepare uh, four articles in three languages and uh, two more video guides on Tajikistan trade portal, 
uh, and also uh, promotional brochures were updated by by uh, and distributed at physical events. So now, uh, in order to continue the presentation, I would like to give the floor to Ms. Alina Ketis. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll try to be brief as we have very limited time left. Um, I'd just like to highlight that despite all these COVID-19 challenges, we really stayed on track with all the activities planned under the committee this year. And even more so, in some of these reforms, we surpassed expectations as many of the laws which we prepared, for example, the law on the AO was already passed. So this shows that even in those challenging circumstances, we managed to deliver the most and especially taking into account that only one NTFC meeting was held, we still continued the work uh, online through other means. And this actually concerns as well one of the very important activities of the committee for this year, which was simplification work on the portal. Initially, we had planned some important workshops to be held in person in the country to explain simplification methodology uh, to the stakeholders. And unfortunately, they were postponed due to COVID-19. However, of course, we immediately decided that we need to adapt our implementation modality and try to conduct this work to make sure that all these procedures, which are now displayed on the portal, could be streamlined for the benefit of private sector. So we went through uh, working with international experts and very importantly, engaging the permanent technical secretariat in this very heavily technical work. And because of the good knowledge of the portal, we managed to make a good progress on this. And currently, we can see on the slide the procedures which have been analyzed. Some of them are very much textile relevant, such as garment, textile by road procedure, carpets exports by road, import of garment and textile by road. So those procedures are the one we're focusing on, but it's also important to say that simplification effect will be transversal to different procedures related to other uh, goods which are displayed on the portal. The next slide goes perfect. So where are we currently with this? We performed the assessment of those procedures and the recommendations that we have developed are currently under review with the working group. We already had the first meeting of the working group on trade portal where we presented um, our analysis. We received comments from them. And next week we'll be having a second meeting to actually see how we can integrate the comments in our analysis and then present a full fresh recommendations. In order to provide this assessment, what we did, we took the procedure, displayed at the portal, we assessed the necessity of each step. We estimated the required time and proposed optimization for different uh, stages of the export or import process. We tried to eliminate duplications of actions and documents and also estimate the number of documents that are necessary for optimization. And uh, of course, uh, we tried to come up with the scenarios um, how these procedures could be streamlined. And one scenario is the intermediate scenario. We will be looking at the changes which can be introduced pretty fast. And at the same time, we also try to look into ambitious scenario where more uh, heavy automation reforms are necessary and could be undertaken in the next five to 10 years. Now, apart from the simplification activities, which are now going on very fast, I would also like just to take a little bit of time to mention that Permanent Technical Secretariat also took active part in the task force for COVID-19 mitigation. Here in the slide, you can see some of the activities the Secretariat undertook to provide for the more, let's say, um, smooth and uh, situation in the country. And of course, mostly from the trade perspective side, for example, monitoring food prices and markets, looking at the list of products with a high risk of deficit in the internal market, analyzing that other, um, other measures that the countries in the region took. And also, of course, um, developing some specific materials, concept notes, and contacting development partners to see what can be done from their side to mitigate those effects. So all those things, all these actions, of course, contribute to, to the overall economic and trade policy of the country in these difficult circumstances. Now, what I want to say about not only this year, but the overall work that we've been doing with Permanent Technical Secretariat, we can see now that Secretariat demonstrates very important qualities for further success and sustainability of the committee. 
First of all, through continuous training and work from the International Trade Center side with support of MEDT, the Secretariat is now fully trained and capable to manage independently the activities of the committee and also of the trade portal. Even more so, Secretariat is now sharing these best practices to other MEDT staff and representatives, and by this, continuously building internal capacity of the ministry, which was the main goal of the project, to make sure it's not just some external experts who contribute to this, but it's the internal capacity, internal skills of the staff which is being promoted. And even more so, we see that Secretariat was capable to be involved in even more technical and complex activities, such as simplification, due to all the skills that were acquired for the project period. And of course, you know, the committee was created with the objective to support private sector engagement in the policy reform in Tajikistan. And we were very happy to hear that now Secretariat is seen by private sector as a focal point, both for committee issues and portal issues. And even sometimes when private sector needs to contact other governmental agencies, they still go and schedule meetings with the MDT, with the Secretariat to get their support. And we're also very happy to hear recently in some of the international events where private sector representatives from Tajikistan presented their positive feedback on the inclusion in the formulation of the committee agenda, attention to their problems and the solutions which were achieved. For example, this was presented during the Central Asia Trade Forum by some of the um, private sector representatives. And of course, it was a very positive feedback from us externally. Now, of course, I have to say, and this is a very important priority now to maintain the sustainability of the committee and immediately together with us, we'll be discussing these issues and we're happy to hear that MEDT is committed to ensure sustainability of secretariat. And I'm sure that Mr. Abdurrahman could provide more details on this. But the first, let's say three most important pillars of this is of course, some contractual obligation which is that the members of Secretariat will need to remain in the ministry minimum three years since the end of the project. Then in case after this period, one of the representatives will leave the ministry, the training has to be provided to a replacement person, both on the portal issues and Secretariat issues. And of course, the MEDT within its resources, which are of course limited now due to COVID-19 circumstances, is planning to retain minimum one representative within its relevant department to continue the functions of the secretary. However, it comes clear that the ministry does need further support to ensure high efficiency of the secretariat. Why so? Well, first of all, the committee covers a number of issues, which is not only trade facilitation, but also e-commerce, transport-related issues, which is larger than in many other committees around the world. And the Secretariat performs a number of functions which are very HR intensive. They have to continuously engage and communicate with private sector, because this is the main goal. They have to manage eight working groups working on different issues. They need to continuously organize the committee meetings, which involves preparation of agenda, presentations, protocols, and report on all those results. They need to continuously monitor what is going on and follow up on the progress. And of course, very importantly, they need to provide constant update of the portal to make sure it remains relevant and reply to the multiple queries they receive from private sector. And MEDT is doing its best efforts to provide possible resources for this but they are limited and even more so due with the COVID-19 crisis. So there is a need for more donor support to continue, let's say, the best performance of Secretariat because of course we need more human resources to ensure that the level, and let's say, remains as efficient, as great as it was these couple of years. And the last thing, and I'll finish with this, I'm very happy to answer your questions later, is on the remaining activities planned for 2021. Uh, our component is coming to the end and what we would like to commit to is of course, to continue supporting the German Technical Secretariat. However, we won't have any more financial resources um, to support, uh, let's say, directly the Secretariat, but of course, ad hoc advisory support will be provided. We still would like to conduct the study tour in Uzbekistan, which was canceled, unfortunately, this year. Um, if COVID-19 permits, hopefully. 
And uh, of course, based on this simplification work, which is currently undergoing and based on the pre recommendations presented, we'd like to do a bit of more work to support the border regulatory agencies to implement some of those recommendations and see what, how we can pinpoint when to make the best use of, uh, of these practices. Thank you so much for, for your attention and of course, we'll be happy to take your questions.